Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu of Eve University, and this video is about sensor dampening. Sensor dampening is the other form of electronic warfare that interferes with your enemy's ability to establish a target lock. Uh, where ECM jamming just simply rolls a random number, and if the random r number is good enough, says, No locks for you! Sensor dampening, on the other hand, just applies penalties to uh, the enemy's targeting range and scan resolution. Right? So, for example, here's my here's uh, my alt client, uh, my alt flying, again, the Raven battleship. And in the fitting window, under the targeting section, right, in the bar of the targeting section is listed the maximum targeting range, 93.75 kilometers, and directly underneath that is the scan resolution, uh, 106 millimeters. In EVE Online, larger numbers for this are better. Yes, I know. It's called a resolution, and yet larger links are better. Go figure. Don't ask me, ask CCP. But the larger this number, the faster you can establish a target lock. Right. So if I have my alt target lock my main, that's going to take mm, roughly 12 seconds. Right. I can speed up the process by uh, using a sensor booster. And give me a moment. So if I start that over again, if I turn on some sensor boosters that are skip scripted for scan resolution, or indeed uh, sensor boosters that aren't scripted, that will make the scan resolution go up. And I can get a target lock much faster. So that only took maybe 3 or 4 seconds instead of 12 seconds. So that's the be uh, those are beneficial effects that can be applied to scan resolution. Again, sensor boosters can also uh, increase the target lock range, so now I can target lock things out to 228 kilometers instead of my normal of 93 kilometers. Right. So... It's these numbers that remote sensor dampening interfere with. So when I have my main start uh, sensor dampening my alt, these numbers are going to go down. So targeting range will be less than 93 kilometers, scan resolution will be less than 106. Right. So here I have... Alright, so here I have five sensor dampeners in all five mid-slots of my Celestis class Galente Cruiser. I have two of these scripted for uh, uh, scan resolution dampening, and two of these scripted for targeting range dampening. And let me first challenge myself to a duel. All right, there, that starts a limited engagement. <clears throat> so if I turn on a, if I turn on a remote sensor dampener that's not scripted for anything, it's going to have a moderate effect, a moderate detrimental effect on the target lock range and the scan resolution. So now uh, Leonard Chong can only target lock out to 66 kilometers instead of 93 kilometers and has a scan resolution of 75 millimeters instead of 100 something. Right. I can script a sensor dampener, a remote sensor dampener, so if I act turn one on that's scripted for scan resolution dampening, nothing happens to the target lock range, but the scan resolution has dropped uh, has dropped from 100 down to 45. So if I now try to target lock the Celestis, now that's a lot slower. Instead of 12, 13, 14 seconds, it's taking like 25 seconds or something. Uh, I can speed this up a little bit uh, if I turn on my own sensor boosters. So now the sensor boosters are fighting against the remote sensor dampener, which I'll explain in a little bit. Right? But being having my sense having my scan resolution be dampened means it takes me a lot longer to target lock anything. Once I have the target lock established, losing scan resolution doesn't matter because scan resolution only applies when I'm trying to start a new target lock. Right? However, if I'm sensor dampened such that my targeting range drops below however far away that target is, in this case 27 kilometers, if I turn on these remote sensor dampeners that are scripted to dampen the targeting range, let me turn both of them on, now my target lock range has dropped to 19 and a half kilometers. And there you go, 
the target lock just dropped because the Celestis is now too far away for my Raven to target lock it. Target Celestis is too far away from your Raven. It must be within 19 kilometers, but is actually 27 kilometers away. Now, if I turn off one of these sensor dampeners, so I only have one sensor dampener running, uh, then my targeting range goes back up, uh, my Raven's targeting range goes back up to about 39 kilometers, and I can start a target lock again. All right. uh, I, unlike ECM jamming, sensor dampeners are uh, stacking penalized. Right. So let me script this these three for targeting range. So these are each negative 58% penalties to my victim's targeting range. Which, again, if there were no such thing as stacking penalties, negative uh, 58%, that's a 0. 0.42 multiplier to the targeting range. And if there were no such thing as stacking penalties and apply three of these, uh, that would reduce the tar victim's target lock range to 7.4% of normal, which out of 93 kilometers would be about 7 kilometers. Right. Uh, but what we actually have is it only drops to 13 kilometers. Again, stacking penalties. Uh, for additional details on this, see my video on stacking penalties. Right. It's also worth noting that beneficial effects and harmful effects are stacking penalized separately. So for this single Raven battleship, beneficial effects to targeting range are stacking penalized separately from harmful effects to targeting range, are stacking penalized separately from beneficial effects to scan resolution, are stacking penalized separately from harmful effects to scan resolution. For those of you keeping score, for these two attributes, targeting range and sensor dampening, we've got four different stacking penalties calculations. So stacking penalties applies by the particular attribute and whether it's going up or down. Okay. Uh, now these particular sensor boosters here are going to be involved with stacking penalties calculations for these two attributes, both beneficial. Right? So when stacking penalties is trying to calculate the beneficial effects to maximum targeting range, it's going to look at these four modules, the two scripted, the two unscripted. And when it goes to look at the scan resolution, it's going to look at the three scripted and two unscripted. So uh, scan resolution is going to ignore these two, and targeting range is going to ignore these three. Similarly, if this one here... I have to wait for it to stop cycling before I can tell it to unscript. Unload to cargo. There we go. So similarly, uh, for the harmful effects, the calculation for scan resolution is ignoring these two, whereas the calculation for targeting range is ignoring these two. This module gets involved in both of them. It is worth pointing out that... Uh, this stacking penalties calculation on this one Raven battleship will take into account all incoming hostile effects. Right now, I've only got one Celestis on the field. If there were four other Celestis cruisers on the field, and they were each applying five sensor dampeners to me, uh, then they would all get rolled into the stacking penalties calculation. Right? So, like, three or four of those other cruisers would pretty much be redundant because we've got so many modules. So here, let me simplify this example a little bit. Let's just talk about targeting range. So if I had five Celestis cruisers, each using five sensor dampeners, all scripted for targeting range, that's 25 modules you're putting 25 modules in the stacking penalties calculation. Right? So really only the first five or six, uh, only the first four or five of those modules would count. So before you even get any, any of the other Celestis cruisers involved, uh, you've already pretty much hit whatever practical limit you're gonna run into. I mean, yeah, each additional module is having some sort of additional effect, 
but it's going to be so tiny you might that for any practical intent or purpose you may as well ignore it right uh, so that is the those are the basic mechanics of sensor damping uh, let me talk about the ships that are bonused for it so market uh, there's electronic warfare, remote sensor dampeners, remote sensor dampener 2. If I show info on it like this, it's showing the baseline numbers for that module before any bonuses come into play. So negative 15.3% each, no script, no bonuses. Whereas if I show info on it as fit to my ship, it's taking bonuses into account. It's also taking scripts into account. This is scripted for uh, targeting range dampening, so it's not going to show an effect for a scan resolution. And the maximum targeting range bonus is negative 57.98%. Alright, so there are uh, skills that come into play. So signal suppression is the skill that uh, increases the strength of remote sensor dampeners. 5% bonus per level. I have that trained up to level 5, so it's a 1.25 multi uh, multiplier on top of the stock number. I have this fit to a Celestis Cruiser, and the Celestis Cruiser has bonuses based on my level of Galente Cruiser, 7.5% bonus to remote sensor dampener effectiveness. I have Galente Cruiser trained to level 5, so this is a 37.5% bonus, or a 1.375 multiplier. Additionally, I have a couple of rigs fit to this Celestis. These are medium inverted signal field projectors, Allegedly, these are also 5% bonuses each, so 1.05% multipliers. Uh, note that the rigs, however, are stacking penalized. All right. so, yes, the rigs have an effect that's stacking penalized on all five modules that are each stacking penalized because they are being applied to the same Raven battleship. It's two different layers of stacking penalties. So because I have the two of these rigs fit, uh, it's a 5% bonus and another 5% bonus. The second rig isn't really 5%. It's more like uh, 4 point something percent. I mean, probably more like 4.3 or 4.4% bonus. You 1.05 multiplier and 1.043 multiplier. All right. So I got the skill. I've got the ship. I've got uh, the rigs. Those can, uh, and of course, I can either script it or not script it at all. All right, so that's what I can do for my remote sensor dampeners. Uh, it's worth noting that unlike ECM jamming, where there are superior vessels uh, with superior uh, ECM jamming bonuses, so if, for example, if I were comparing the Blackbird Kaldari Cruiser, that's a 15% bonus to ECM target jammer strength per level of Kaldari Cruiser, or I could step up to the recon ships, and I've got a 30% bonus to ECM tar target jammer strength per level of recon ships. That's a stronger bonus. That does not exist for sensor dampening. Right? So whether I'm looking at uh, whether I'm looking at the Mollus, that's a 7.5% bonus per level. Or I could be looking at the electronic attack frigates. That's also 7.5% bonus per level to remote sensor dampeners. Or again, the Celestis, same exact bonus. Or the recon cruisers, the recon ships, uh, the Galente recon ships. Uh, again, 7.5% bonus to remote sensor dampeners. You're not going to do any better than the Mollus or the Celestis. I mean, the, like, the Tech 2 electronic attack frigates and the, uh, the, recon, the Tech 2 recon ships. Those have exactly the same bonus to remote sensor uh, dampeners. So if it's remote sensor dampening that you care about, you're, you're not going to do any better than the Mollus or the Celestis, really. Uh, the electronic attack frigate and the recon ships for the Galente instead have significant bonuses to the range of warp, dis uh, the warp disruptors and warp scramblers, which is what EVE University considers the tackling role rather than the electronic warfare role. Although for the purposes of market organization, tackling modules are filed under electronic warfare. So tackling modules prevent your enemy from escaping, and that's what the Galente Tech 2 vessels 
are bonused for. So that so that's a diff big difference between the sensor dampeners and the ECM jammers. So just be aware of that. And that is sensor dampening. Thank you for watching.